Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God is again waking us to a bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. sentence is on page 32 of our Books of Common Prayer, and we will continue on page 35 thereafter and following. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Saviour. And praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph for all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his course with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this point where we Confess to Almighty God that we have sinned and fallen short of his expectations of us. Let us bring before God those things and let us ask for God's forgiveness. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the psalm appointed for us this morning. And that is Psalm 88. We find Psalm 88 beginning on page 582 of our Books of Common Prayer. Let us recite the psalm together. O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength. Lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, 
and all your great waves overwhelm me. You've put my friends far from me. You've made me to be abhorred by them. I'm in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to our first reading. And our first reading is taken from the book of First Maccabees. And we're reading from chapter 1, verses 41 to 63. Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and that all should give up their particular customs. All the Gentiles accepted the command of the king. Many, even from Israel, gladly adopted his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And the king sent letters by messengers to Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. He directed them to follow customs strange to the land, to forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the sanctuary, to profane Sabbaths and festivals, to defile the sanctuary and the priests to build altars and sacred precincts and shrines for idols, to sacrifice swine and other unclean animals, and to leave their sons uncircumcised. They were to make themselves abominable by everything unclean and profane, so that they would forget the law and change all the ordinances. He added, and whoever does not obey the command of the king shall die. In such words he wrote to his whole kingdom. He appointed inspectors over all the people and commanded the towns of Judah to offer sacrifice, town by town. Many of the people, everyone who forsook the law, joined them, and they did evil in the land. They drove Israel into hiding in every place of refuge they had. Now on the 15th day of Chislev, in the 145th year, they erected a desolating sacrifice, sacrilege, on the altar of burnt offering. They also built altars in the surrounding towns of Judah and offered incense at the doors of the houses and in the streets. The books of the law that they found they tore to pieces and burned with fire. Anyone found possessing the book of the covenant or anyone who adhered to the law was condemned to death by decree of the king. They kept using violence against Israel, against those who were found month after month in the towns. On the 25th day of the month, they offered sacrifice on the altar that was on top of the altar of burnt offering. In accordance with the decree, they put to death the women who had, who had their children circumcised. 
and their families and those who circumcised them and they hung the infants from their mothers' necks. But many in Israel stood firm and were resolved in their hearts not to eat unclean food. They chose to die rather than to be defiled by food or to profane the Holy Covenant, and they did die. Very great wrath came upon Israel. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And now we will have the canticle, the Lord's Servant, on page 52 of our books of common prayer. He was despised, he was rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, as one from whom people hid their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the torments he endured, while we thought he was being punished, struck by God and brought low. He was pierced for our sins, bruised for no fault but ours. His punishment has won our peace, and by his wounds we are healed. We had all strayed like sheep, all taken our own way, but the Lord laid on him the guilt of us all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to our second reading, which is from the Gospel of Matthew. We're reading Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So let us reflect now on this passage we just read from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. And in this passage, we have Peter's declaration, this God-inspired declaration as Jesus told him, you couldn't have arrived at that on your own. You had to be God-inspired. So that God-inspired declaration of Peter, that who Jesus was, Jesus, Peter says, you are the son, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Of course, Jesus had previously asked them, who do other people say that I am? And the people thought Jesus was John the Baptist who had come back. In fact, we know Herod thought that. There were those who from Scripture, since Elijah was to, was to come back at a point before the coming of the Son of God, some people thought that it, Jesus might be Elijah or, or, or one of the great prophets. But when Jesus asked, the disciples, who do you say that I am? It was Peter, the one who always, you know, came forward, who gave this God-inspired answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this, this declaration as to who Jesus is, is, is as Messiah and 
son of God. It's against the background of, you know, in Caesarea Philippi where Jesus had taken them. And, and the thing about Caesarea Philippi, it had this huge temple that was built in honor of Caesar, the emperor, the Roman emperor Caesar, who was, who was deified as a god. So against this back, pagan backdrop where the worship of Caesar was much practiced, it's against that background that Peter is making this declaration as to who, in fact, is the true Son of God, and ultimately, therefore, who in fact is the true God. And Jesus, of course, uses this opportunity to talk about the future, the future of his church. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. You know, we, we, we are used to reading Peter you know, all along the gospel, but this is the, in, this is the instance in which that name Peter came about for Simon. His, we know his name was Simon. So here's where Peter gave him that, what some call a nickname, which really means rock. And Peter is, Jesus is saying to him, you are Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. This is who you are. This is the name I'm giving you now. And why am I giving you this name? Because Peter means rock. And it is on this rock that I will build my church. So Jesus is talking about the fact that he will establish his church. Now, it says uh, on this rock, and there is great dispute as to exactly what Jesus means. Did he mean this rock, Peter? Or on this rock-like like declaration of faith? What, what is it really? Or is it some, somewhere in between? And there's much difference there in the church even nowadays as to whether Jesus was saying he'll build his church on Peter the rock or whether he'll build his church on that rock-like faith that Peter uh, declared. Well, nevertheless, you know, whichever, these might seem might be two extremes, but there's no doubt, of course, when we read the passage that Jesus intended that Peter would play a very important role in the building of his church building up of that church. Um, for those who want to insist that it is, he met Peter, and that would be mainly Roman Catholics, we, we can see that there is at least, if we turn to, to, um, to Matthew 18, we will read in verse 18 where Jesus, where Jesus is saying, and let's find it here quickly, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And here Jesus is talking to the whole church, not just to Peter. So at least I think the interpretation um, of this, going back to chapter 16 that we are discussing this morning, yes, it is on that Peter has an important role to play. But of course, it is. we, we might also add it is that faith that Peter declared, which will be the basis on which the church will be built. So that we can come to some kind of in-between position as we go forward. But as we continue to read, Jesus continues to give, continues to give authority to his church. And so he says, and he's speaking to Peter, therefore we say Peter must have, had a, very important, must have a very important role. We have to, 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 to uh, concede this. It says, I will give you, he says, on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. The gates of Hades can be roughly um, translated as the powers of darkness. The powers of darkness will not be able to prevail against Christ's church. And Christ continues to say, Jesus continues to say, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So first of all, before he says that, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And of course, that, that, that metaphor is, is one to do with authority. They, they will literally uh, give him that authority.
to, to let's say, uh, not to prevent people from entering or so, but by their work, by the teaching of the church, by God's inspiration and the teaching of the church, the kingdom of heaven will be opened. So in that sense, Peter and all the disciples, even up to today, or all those in the church who are teachers and leaders, uh, will indeed have that power. They will have the power of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Again, it is authority. But that binding on earth and binding in heaven is about that ability and power to teach people in such a way that they, their lives are empowered and they're inspired to follow God's by the teaching of the, of the leaders of the church, they will be inspired. The people of the church will be inspired to follow. They will be guided. They will be guided by the leadership in their, in their faithful and correct teaching of the gospel. People will be guided to enter the kingdom of heaven. They will be guided in the kind of conduct where there is any doubt at all that, is, that will be required to enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the, 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 the church, as, as Jesus says it, and the church leaders, beginning with Peter uh, and others at the time, and then down to the day, down to the day, church leaders, genuine church leaders, will be inspired to guide the lives of God's people in such a way, and the faith of God's people in such a way, that they will be enabled or assisted or helped on the path that leads to the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus in this in this passage it, it praises Peter because Peter has given that God inspired answer. And Peter clearly was destined to play a very important role in the church. But we ought to say that so uh, are all, when we, when we think about it, so were the other apostles, and even today there is leadership, and that leadership is spread out among many in the various churches and congregations, and we might say today even denominations of the church. But the important thing is, Jesus says the gates of Hades, the powers of darkness, will not prevail against it. God's church will endure to the very end. The leaders of God's church will be empowered to guide their people. They will be given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever they bind in it will be bound in heaven, and whatever they loose on it will be loose in heaven. They will have that power. It will be ratified in heaven by their teaching to guide people in the way that will lead to the fullness of eternal life that God has in store for all his people, all those you and I who are members of God's church. The Lord be with you.
continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we continue with the collect for today. And so we turn to page 181 of our Books of Common Prayer. And we pray together the collect for Papa 27. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer. O God, our Father, you've been in light to shine out of darkness and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We continue in prayer as we lift up God's world and people in every part of this world. We pray especially for those who are living under conditions of stress, danger, loss of life, conditions of war. We pray especially for those two areas of the world where war is raging. We pray for that area between Israel and Palestine, that war, and between Ukraine and Russia. Father, we pray that you will touch hearts and minds. All those who are set on waging war, we pray that you touch their hearts and turn them to seek peace. And for all the people who are dying, losing loved ones, suffering in the, under those conditions of war, Father, we pray that you will be in the midst of them. Give them strength and courage, Lord. And your people in the midst of all these Situations, we pray that there be sources of your help and hope and love. We continue to pray for the church worldwide, for all who are ministers of your word and sacrament and all who profess the faith of Christ crucified. We pray, Lord, that we, wherever we may be, we will be sources of help and hope and light. We pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide, for all the primates and all our various provinces, for the Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for that unity within our church. In our own province, the church in the province of the West Indies, we pray for Archbishop Howard. We lift up all the bishops of our 
various dioceses in this province. We pray your guidance and inspiration upon them all. And we pray especially for our own Bishop Claude and his family. May your hand of grace and peace be upon them. Continue to inspire our Bishop Claude, Lord, as he leads the church in this place. We lift up all our clergy in our various parishes to your guidance and inspiration. We pray especially for clergy families who have lost loved ones, those who are ill and are in need of your healing hand. We pray, Lord, that your presence and peace will be with them. We pray for our country of Trinidad and Tobago. We lift up our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those who are in positions of authority, those who make decisions that affect the lives of our people. Inspire them all, Lord, to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all. For those who implement the decisions and serve the public, we pray that they will go that extra mile to ensure that the best that the country has to offer is received by those who are in need. We pray for the families of our nation, Lord, for your presence in their homes to bring your peace and love, the parents the wisdom they need to shepherd their children in the way they ought to go. We pray for those who are sick and suffering and crying out for relief, those who have lost loved ones and are in need of your consoling love at this time. For those who have awakened to a day where they do not know where the next meal will come from, touch our hearts and minds and open our eyes that we might see and be able to respond. For senior citizens who need our assistance, for those who are going astray, especially young people going astray, following the wrong voices. Father, we pray for them, we pray for teachers and parents and all those who have a hand in shaping these young people. We ask you, Lord, to, to, to inspire them, that they will be able to guide our young people in the way they ought to go. For all who are in any kind of need today, Lord, we lift them up before you. We pray that you will, as we go about our daily affairs, you will open our eyes and our hearts to respond to the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication on page 47 of our Books of Common Prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.